So this is the last um, last episode of the day. And uh, what we will uh, learn now is um, scripting. It's a bit actually out of order in this one. Let's see. It's the scripting um, episode. So let me go there. And actually, I think we also haven't updated properly the time that we're going to spend on this because uh, according to the schedule, we actually have until 12.30. Um, and uh, let's see how we are. Here's quite a lot of material. And then there's an exercise. Yeah, so let's uh, let's just see how we're going. And Danya, maybe you could uh, help me keep track of the time so that we at least have at least 10 minutes for the exercises. Yeah, thanks. So we will be doing an exercise here. Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, because this is the last session of today and uh, we should finish at 12.30 and we, we do have time so we can go ahead with that. Yeah, great. Okay, so um, yes, we need uh, to get hold of some contents and this is the same contents as we um, were using in the Finding Things um, material. So you might have already downloaded that and uh, if not, go ahead and copy these commands and uh, get hold of that so that you have stuff for the exercises later or or you can wait and do it when we start the exercises. So um, we have learned now how to use commands on the command line. We have learned how to create files, how to write stuff inside files uh, and so on. Uh, we're going to learn how to create a so-called bash script now. Um, and the point with that is that we, instead of having to type all the commands separately on the command line and press enter and let them execute uh, line by line, or for example, piping, you know, into piping, uh, as we were learning with Radovan, all the different commands into each other on the command line, we can write it into a file and we can execute that file, run the file. Um, and that's useful uh, because then we save the commands, right? So uh, Radovan showed us that, uh, yes, you, you have a way to uh, have a look at the history of your commands with a history command. So that would history would show you, you know, the, the commands that you typed on the command line. But uh, it might be a set of lots of commands that you want to save inside a file instead. So that you can share it with others or come back to it later or whatever is the use uh, many many uses of that obviously um so let me go to the finding things folder and there's supposed to be a file called list.sh so let's use the cat command to look into that file so this shows a a file with the content that you see both here on the web browser and here in my terminal. Uh, and it has uh, different pieces here. Uh, this is a script and it's a bash script. And one of the reasons that I know that it's a bash script is the first line here, which is looks kind of cryptical. And there's something called a shebang. And there again, I don't know where that word comes from that you could look up if you're curious. But it's a it's the way to tell um, the tell the tell the operating system what kind of file it is. So it has this particular format. It needs to start with the hash, and that actually indicates that it's a comment. It's a comment actually. So don't execute this uh, in the normal way. It's a comment. But this with the uh, hash and the um, exclamation mark is exactly. Uh, something special and it's this shebang and it points to a path here bin bash and bin bash is the program that we're using so if I do here bin bash on my com on my terminal I actually have that file here it would be actually ah uh, well uh, yes forget about that Yeah, that was a, a bit annoying now my prompt changed, but uh, don't worry about that. I tried to execute bin bash and um, 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 it has uh, 
uh, different things here. Um, actually, I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, it, it tells you that it's the bin bash uh, command, uh, the bash command. And then you have uh, several other lines here. So again, I said that this, uh, this hash here is a uh, comment. So this is just a comment and it won't be executed as a command. So you can write whatever here. Each line that is a comment has to start with this uh, hash if it's a comment. And following comes uh, lines that actually will be executed if you run this file. So echo this string, pwd, and ls star.pdf. Um, so we can try now to run the file. Uh, and by running it, we mean executing all these lines as we were printing them or writing them on the command line. So let's just try first and run it like this. We, we say that we want to run it using the command bash uh, and we need to specify the file name. Press enter. And uh, yes, then it actually um, execute all the lines here. So first it echoed out. So this the result of the echo is all the PDF files in the current folder here, yes. And then we want to print out the uh, working directory, PWD, and the output was uh, the folder. So if I do PWD here, you would see the same output on the command line as I got here. And then ls star PDF will list you all the files ending with PDF in this folder. And I got these two files and let me do it on the command line. I should get the same. So you see, I could uh, run the um, run the uh, script with bash list.sh. Then I'm saying I want to use the, uh, uh, the program bash to run this file. And that's the correct program because it is actually a bash script. So my question, uh, Mike, this dot .sh means it's an uh, executable bash script, or how do yeah, you? Yeah, but it, it actually didn't have to. You could call it whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's a way actually for us to kind of uh, understand that this is actually a, a bash script. So if it was a Python script, you might have called it list.py instead, um, or whatever. If it's a Java script dot yar or you know. So uh, it's actually not uh, necessary with this extension, but it helps programs to know what kind of file it is. Like if you have a fancy editor and it's called .sh, it would know it's a bash script and it would format the colors and everything nicely for you. But what's actually telling us what kind of program it is, is this first line. That's important. So the takeaway will be we, we, we should have uh, at the beginning, the first line with the command and uh, exclamation bin bash when yes. you write the script and comment uh, when you want to have some uh, use a hash to comment. Mm -hmm. uh, then with the lines, you write the commands. Yes. And bash for running this bash script. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yes, exactly. So that's the that's the summary here. Exactly what Tanya said. Now, there's other ways of executing files, um, and that is uh, by uh, creating executables. And there's a few steps that we have to learn uh, for that. So it can be a bit annoying that each time you want to run this script that you have to run, say, bash script, because, uh, you know, list sh, because, uh, uh, I want just the operating system to know that I want to run it with bash, okay? So there's a way to do that. Um, but if I do list.sh only without the bash, it will tell me that it doesn't know, that it will interpret this as a command and it doesn't know what to do. Um, so it, it can't find it, basically. Uh, and the reason for that is we have something called a path. So uh, Default is that there is a certain there are certain places in the system that uh, the operating system will look for uh, commands or executables to run, like for example the bin folder. There are other places also, 
So if I, for example, want to check what paths are set on my system, I can type this command. This is not in the in instructions here, I think, but I just want to show you that you get a uh, kind of a different uh, folders here separated by colon and that shows the areas in the file system where uh, com uh, executables will be looked for and my finding things folder is not in this path so I have to do some extra things for for being able to just type list.sh and run that as a command so first we will look at uh, the information about lists. So if we do ls-l, as we have learned earlier, we will get some extended information about the files and the folders in the in the um, folder here. And uh, the part that we will look at now is the first part here. So we see uh, dash rw, dash rw, dash r, and dash dash. So this is the clue for understanding if a file is executable or not. So these are bits set for, for the different uh, uses. So first of all, there's it's grouped in three. So dash rw, that's one group, dash rw, another group, dash r, and then dash is another group, and then there's an extra one at the end here. Uh, yes, sorry. It's uh, the opposite. There's an extra in the beginning and, that, and then it starts three, three, three. Um, you see there is a D here. Uh, D stands for telling us that it's a directory. So the, the one on the here, for example, that is a directory as it has D here. The R says that it's a readable file. It's possible to open and read it. The W says that it's possible to write to the file. And the X says that it's possible to execute it. So for example, this one has read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, read, and then execute. It's a folder and you have to actually have ex executable writes in order to go into the folder. So those are the permissions. But then the different groups that I said that it was grouped in three, that is because uh, there's different levels. You have the owner, the one that created the file. The first three here say that these are the permissions for the owner. The next three tells you what permissions uh, are set for the group. So you would be a member of different groups um in linux so you can learn more about this by you know uh, later on but uh, uh, one person like mike and p which is my username i can be a member of different groups um depending on the system and then the last three are for everyone so anyone on the system uh, would be able to have the permissions written here okay so there's many more information here. I don't think I'll go into all of that. those. The most important for us at the moment are the permissions here and the, who owns it. So what I want to do now is to make the file executable. And there's also different ways of doing this, uh, but a simple way, which will make it executable for everyone is to use the command chmod. So uh, I think it's for change mode. So C-H-M-O-D and then the plus and X for executable and then the file I want to make executable. So I press enter and let's check. Uh, it actually didn't change it. Yes, I haven't done it there. So, sorry, there we go. Yes, so now we see that uh, both me as uh, the owner, I can execute it, the X is set. The group, all, all that are part of the group, uh, in this case, uh, Mike and P, 
can execute it and actually everybody else can execute it. And you see also there's a color here, it changed color. This might be different depending on where you are. Uh, and you can you can um, also customize this to your liking to put the color uh, executable files in a different color. So that's now we've managed to make it executable and now we can try to run it. And um, I have to tell, still tell Linux where it is. So I um, cannot just do list.sh. It still won't find it. I have to tell it that I'm. it's here in my folder. And the way I do that is by uh, the, the punctuation mark and the slash. So it's here in this folder. And then I can uh, write list.sh. And then I can press enter. And now you see that it's run it in the same way as when we said bash list sh. So that means that our script worked. So I could also be anywhere else. Um, if I'm somewhere, let's see, I'm now in the finding things. If I go out to my home folder uh, and I do list sh, that won't work because now it's not in the current folder where I am. There's no list sh here. There's no file here called this sh. But then I can specify the full path. So, okay, it's in finding things and it's in list there, finding things list sh. Um, I have to still do the dot slash. No. Ah, it, it might be the wrong finding folder, but this should be able, this, this should actually work. So I, I might have um, gone out of the right wrong folder and gone in again, sorry for that. But if you're not in the current uh, folder, you can just specify the whole file now that that uh, file is executable. Yeah, I make I may comment. I yeah. usually get this uh, when I stay, uh, put the path. So I always, I try to go to the same uh, directory where I have the executable files and to do that. Probably yeah, I'm, that. I think it's supposed to work. So I'm a bit, yeah. uh, but you know, when doing things online, one gets a bit, uh, the, the mind goes a bit blank sometimes. Yeah, can we go to the exercise? Uh, yes, okay? we can do that. So just uh, read this note later. So this is how you, uh, information about this shebang and for the different, for example, Perl or Python scripts and uh, the the explanation of, of what you do for the different ones. Um, okay, so the exercise. Um, so what we want you to do is um, create a new script uh, current folder.sh should be the file name. Um, and we want that it should print a message with echo. And then it should um, uh, print uh, the current folder we are in with pwd. So you should go ahead and try to make this bash script. So we're kind of telling you it's a bash script by this .sh in the end. Uh, create that file and, and try to execute it. So you'll have uh, until uh, 12, basically until we end here. Um, Maybe, we, yeah. yeah, we can have an eight minutes. You can try with Nano uh, yeah. this and create these files. And uh, I would like uh, you to be back here and just to have some feedback on yes. the like collaborative document uh, and just a way forward to more for tomorrow a teaser we can discuss a little teaser for tomorrow and then another day yeah thank you okay so go ahead with exercises and good luck